Hello everyone, how are you today? God bless you, thank you for joining on Ambrose King Online Ministries, Kingdom Lord Church. We want to welcome you to today's lovely service. That's a lovely day here in the nation's capital. Today we're going to be talking briefly on Christ being formed in you. Christ being formed in you. So I want to welcome you to, to this online service. Go ahead and share this video. God bless you, thank you for joining. Christ being formed in you. How can Christ be formed in you? And that's what we're going to be talking about briefly. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night wherever you're watching from. And thank you for joining us. I see some of you already joining. Well, I'm going to go straight to the point because it's going to be a short video. Christ form in you. How can Christ be formed in you? What does it mean for Christ to be formed in you? You see, when you get saved, God begins to form himself in you. Immediately, he begins to form himself in you. Understand that before you got saved, you were doing things based on the world. You were controlled by the devil. You are controlled by the things of this world. You think like this world. Um, when you got born into this world by your parents, you were born into the world of darkness. And and because of that, you are Satan rule. Uh, when you get saved, that is when you trust on Jesus and what Jesus did for you. God didn't want you to perish. That's why he sent Jesus to rescue you from disaster. And um, immediately after you get saved, God begins to walk in you. He wants you to conform to his son jesus christ and so many people don't even know that uh, that is god's main purpose uh, you find out that after you got saved if you submit yourself to god you begin to have a dislike for things that you used to like things that you used to enjoy um, so many people may just hate you may dislike you and you don't even know why before you got born again before you got saved uh, everybody like you everybody want to be around you you there are places that you love to go so after a while you find out that you're uncomfortable and people don't understand you your even classmates may not even like you they may not even like your behavior because you have changed so people don't know so today we're going to be talking briefly on christ forming in you so once again i want to welcome you to our online service god bless you and have your scriptures with you let us examine the scriptures together have you ever found yourself doing things you have some behavior or you have some things that you just don't enjoy just don't like but you don't know how to stop you don't have the ability to stop you know once you submit yourself to christ once you are saved it begins to work on you immediately it begins to transform you to conform to the image of the son that is god's perfect will for you and i and that's what we're going to be examining today you know um your hunger for god and the things of god will suddenly increase you that don't, you know, you, you probably not understand the Bible, may not understand how to read the Bible, but all of a sudden you find out that your hunger for God is uncontrollable. Your hunger for the things of God begins to grow. And that is because God is now forming Christ in you. Oh my goodness. You know, uh, many years ago when I first got saved, I um, I didn't know how God was going to transform me because I, was, I wasn't really a nice person. Um, I was so much thinking of it. Well, things in America was trying to to take over me, but um, I thank God that in the midst of that, uh, Christ began to form Himself in me, and uh, I think differently. And it's a work in progress. Wherever you are right now, don't um, <clears throat> don't be discouraged if things are not going the way you want. It's a work in progress. The thing is, unfortunately, so many people don't know that once you are saved, God begins to walk in you. He begins to shape you. He begins to shape your character. He begins to shape the way you think. You know, God deals with us differently. So you are unique in his formation of you. Even twins, identical twins, God has different purpose for them. So God deals with them differently. So um, we, there's no room to be envious. There's no room to be uh, dis disappointed. Or discourage when you see that things are not going. You see some certain people they can read the scripture, they can quote the scripture, their behavior pattern has changed. It's because God dealt with them uniquely. So you are unique, you are the best that God created. So again, I want to welcome you. I see show Mukayode watching Mabel. She will God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for joining. I look Jay Perkin. I God bless you. Ade Joseph. Tony, God bless you. Abigail, I saw you watching. God bless you. Thank you for joining. So let us let the scripture speak for us. The speaker will speak himself for himself. So, um, once you are saved, unfortunately, God does not form unbelievers. If you are not saved, 
God will not work in you. The Holy Spirit will not transform you. He will not do it. He will let you to do whatever you want to do. In John chapter 20, verse 21, John chapter 20, verse 21, this is the word of Jesus. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. When I saw this verse many years ago, I said, wow, you mean God is sending me the same way God sent Jesus. And that's what Jesus said. He said, peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me. The same way, the same behavior, the same character that is in Jesus. That is the character that you would demonstrate on the pulpit. That's why in my, um, in my, in my, in my, in my uh, announcement, I said, even though you're a pastor, even though you're a church member, going from program to program, it's not enough. Belonging to a church, being a member in a church is not enough. You have to allow God to form Christ in you. So many Christians don't even know that that is the will of God. That's what I discovered many years ago. Oh my goodness. I said, Christ can be formed in me. It was so impossible. But when you submit yourself to God and His Word, He begins to deal with you independently. Glory to God. You know, when you look at Christianity today, you have the carnal Christians and you have the spiritual Christian. The carnal Christians are those who go to church. All they see is the pictures, how people dress. They go to show off their clothes. They go to show off their cars. The words and the message doesn't go into their spirit. They don't, they, they don't understand. They, they can't even grasp the word. They are the people that gossip a lot. They are the people that cause problems in the church because they are still carnal. They are still thinking in the worldly way. The, the spiritual Christians are those who have matured. Those who have submitted themselves to God, allow God to form Christ in them. My question today is, how is Christ formed in your life? Have you allowed God to form Christ in your life? How does Christ get formed in you? It's by faith. Christ gets formed in you once you are saved by faith. Let me read Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17. It says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. You see, it said that Christ will dwell in your heart. As Christ dwells in you, he begins to manifest himself in you. The way you think begins to change. You know, you have um, dislike for things that you used to do. Clubs that you used to go to, parties that you used to go, the way to dress, the way you talk begin to transform. And people don't understand you. You find out that people that your colleagues, your classmates, those that you were together before, they don't understand you anymore. And as a matter of fact, they will dislike you. And that is because God is doing a deep work in you. God wants you to reflect heaven here on earth. He wants you to transform the earth. You are the representative of heaven. But you cannot do that in your carnal mind. That's why you have so many carnal pastors, so many false prophets misleading people every day. That's because they have not allowed God to transform them before they mount pulpit. You know, the Son of God comes and takes shape in us from within if we rely on Him. When we rely on God, God begins to send Christ, the anointing, to come and shape us. The Son takes shape in those who abandon themselves to Him. When you abandon yourself to God, Jesus begins to take shape in you. You know, Christ forms Himself in the lives of those who will let go of all forms of life in which they have, they have shaped themselves. See, Christ takes shape in a life that is willing to be put in God's hands. Oh, you know, you have your own will, you have your own desire, you have your own plans, but God has his own plan, his own unique plan for your life. Until you submit yourself to God, he cannot form you. So you have to let go of your desire. You have to let go of what you want. You have to let go of your aim. I remember what I want to become once I went to university. I look at my certificates and degree, what I could have become. But I look at it is better for me to submit myself to God's purpose and plans for my life. You're going to universities is okay as long as you use it to bring glory to God. You know, um, when you look at the word of God in First Corinthians chapter six, verse twenty, it says you are bought at a price. Once you are saved, once you're born again, your life is no longer your own. Your body is no longer your body. Your hands are not your hands anymore. You are bought at a price. So the best thing for you to do is to submit yourself to your Savior. Let Him transform you. You know, He told Jeremiah, He said, before, before, uh, before you were born, I knew you and I formed you. Before you were formed, I knew you before. So He has a plan for you. He has a plan for us. And the plan of God for our life is good. It's for good and expected end. 
Glory to God. Well, let's continue. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, Christ forming in you. Christ forming in you. I love this. You mean, as bad as you might think that you look. As bad as you might think. It's not about how you look physically. As bad as people hate you, they dislike you. God can form you and use, it for, use you for his glory. Never give up, give up. That is God's plan for your life. And that's why you have to abandon yourself. Let your life be for the glory of God. And he will shape you and we honor you and he will use it for his glory. And you will be rewarded. Let us proceed further. Let us take this one step further. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 27, let me just read a few texts to you. He said, to whom God will make known what is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. When Jesus died, when he ascended to heaven, he left Christ with us. So Christ is not in heaven. Christ is inside of you when you get saved. Christ comes to stay in you. However, that is not good enough. That's why just being a pastor or going to church, going from program to program is not enough. You see, Christ can be dormant in you. He can be dormant in your life unless you let him form you and shape you for his use. Otherwise, Christ will be in you. You find out that you, that you have Christ in you. You are always sick. You are always broke. You are always sad. You are looking for deliverance. You are looking for false prophets. You are looking for false miracles. No, Christ has come to live in you. But you have to let him to shape you and transform you. The process is lengthy. It's a process throughout your life. Unfortunately, many Christians don't know. They think that once they join a church, they want God to save them from sin, to save them from Satan, to protect them. It's way more than that. You know, that's why I said it's more than being a church member. It's more than... Uh, you know, they say sacrifice service or giving seed. Or, it's more than that. God wants to form Christ inside of you. And you don't have to give him anything for it. Because he wants to use you for his glory. He wants to be proud of you. You know, you have to be the one to allow God to form you for his kingdom. So many people have been so formed into their church doctrine. So many people have been so formed into a negative way of thinking. But until you submit yourself to the word of God, submit yourself to God, he will not form himself in you. He will not form himself on you. He doesn't push you. He won't force himself on you. Let's take this one step further. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10 to 13. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10 to 13. The fourth chapter of Ephesians, verse 10 to 13. He said, He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. That's why I said it's more than it. It's just, just being a pastor is not enough. What is your goal? What is your, what is, what, what is your role? What is your objective? It's there. It's there for the perfecting of the saints. Once you are saved, you are a saint, and God wants to perfect you. He wants to perfect everything that concerns you. He said, for the perfecting of the sin, for the work of the ministry. Woo! God wants to perfect you. He wants to shape himself. He wants to shape Christ in you. For the work of your ministry that God has called you. He said, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. If you are not edifying the body of Christ, if you are not pointing people to Jesus, to the finished works, if you still have your own doctrine, you are manipulating, you are deceiving, you are scamming people out of their money, out of their property for your, for your, for your, for, for, for your own profit, for your kingdom building, then you are not edifying the body of Christ. That's why I say it's more than being a pastor. It's more than being a church member. It's more than being going from one program to the other. You have to submit yourself to God so that he can form Christ in you. And that's the only way he can use you for his glory. And yes, it is possible. He can do it for you. He will do it for you if you let go of your own anxiety, ambition and hold on to Jesus. Verse 13, it says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Hallelujah. Glory. Unto a perfect man. Hiya. Have you ever heard people say nobody is perfect? Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. No, that is not the will of God for your life. God wants to perfect you. God, oh my goodness, I feel the auction of the Holy Spirit. I feel the presence of God. If you allow Him, don't say because you're in America, <laughs> you want to go to the American system. The American system will deceive you. Oh, I've been in America for over 30 years. 
if you decide to go the American system, the American world where you do whatever you want to do, or you say you are from Nigeria, you want to do the Nigerian system, or you want to do the European system, no, it will fail you because Satan is the ruler of this world. And the end result is disappointment. So just going to church is not enough. You have to understand that whoever is leading you, whoever is ministering to you, is the person that defines the body of Christ. Are they building you up for your ministry? Are they teaching you how Christ can be forming you? Oh, glory to God. Look at it. He said, till we come. <laughs> Woo! For, he said, for the perfecting of the saints. Verse, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 4. For those just joining, I see so many of you just joining. Verse 12 of Ephesians chapter 4. For the perfecting of the saints. If you are a Christian, 10, 5, uh, five 10, 15 years, and you are still scamming, you are still deceiving people, you are still lying, you are not yet being perfected. Oh, what are you learning? Wow. He said, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Woo! Glory to God. That is the plan of God for your life. He want to bring you into perfection. Oh, have you abandoned yourself to God so that he will build Christ in you? It's a work in progress. And if you're watching me today and you don't know that God can perfect Christ in you, Oh, all you need to do is submit yourself to God. And we'll discuss that in a minute. He said, unto a perfect man, unto the, higher, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. That means God can so load you with Christ that you are full of Christ. To the fullness, to, oh my goodness, human beings can be so full of Christ. That is God's will for your life. God, that's God's plan for your life. That's why you need to get hold of the Bible. You need to be a friend of the word of God. You have been perfected to be so full of Christ. It is in the Bible. No, don't be saying that nobody is perfect. You like yourself the way you are. No, there is more for you. There is more for me. And that's why I'm bringing you this message. Glory to God. He said, till we all come unto the unity of our faith and of the knowledge. The knowledge. Epignosis. Ah, yeah, yeah. This is a revelation of knowledge that is only available to those who have been initiated. Into the kingdom of God, the inner class, the inner caucus, full knowledge woo, of the Son of God as we mature to the full measure of the statue of Christ. It's in your Bible. It's in your Bible. I'm not reading something else. It's in your Bible. So many Christians don't know that they can move from being a poor, a poor sick person to someone that is so full of Christ. He said to the full statue. To the full stature of Christ. That should be your goal on this earth. If you don't allow God to form Christ in you, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how many members you have. It doesn't matter how many times you go and serve in the church as an usher, as a deacon, as a, as a choir. If Christ is not formed in your life, that would be a wasted life. Don't waste your life. Submit yourself to God. Let God perfect you. It talks about perfection. God wants to perfect you. God wants to bring to the fullness, the totality of Christ. That when they see you, when they see you on the street, they see Christ. You are the exact replica of Christ. Oh, glory to God. And you become mature. You have the full measure of Christ, the anointed one. You are the anointed one of God. It's not the pastor. It's not the, only the pastor or the Jew or the prophet. That's why you shouldn't be seeking after prophets. You shouldn't be seeking after miracles or signs and wonders. You submit yourself to God so he can load you and form you and shape you into Christ. That's God's perfect will for your life. All over the world, wherever you are. So let's take this one step further. Glory to God. I trust that this message is blessing you. Go ahead and hit the share button now. Share it. Let it be a blessing. Especially to those who have been caged in those so-called coven where they have been manipulated and deceived. Glory to God. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 to 2. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2. We're going to take it one step further. <laughs> this is Apostle Paul speaking. He says, I beseech you, therefore brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Wow. You present yourself. You are already holy. Once you are saved, you are not trying to be holy. You are a holy person. You are sanctified. But now you have to present yourself, your body to God. Look at verse 2. I love verse 2. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. 
That's why you need to get hold of the Bible. Let the Bible be your best friend. Oh, glory to God. My lovely pastor from India, God bless you. Pastor Raju, God bless you. Thank you for joining. In the second verse of Romans chapter 12, I love it. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Oh, my goodness. It's a command. Look at that. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. It's a command. So if you are a Christian, you are still conformed to this world. You are still behaving the way you... You know, sometimes I see on my Facebook page, some people, the way they send pictures and message to me, and, and, and I ask them, I say, which church do you go to? And they mention the name of their church. I say, oh my goodness, what are you learning? Who is, who, who is your mentor? Who are you following? Look at it. It said, be not conformed to this world. You see, Christian, they are still dressing naked, trying to seduce a man. <laughs> they are still trying to manipulate people and scam them out of money. They are still trying to do what is called Yahoo Yahoo and go and pay tithes on those things. And they give seeds. No, you are deceiving yourself. He said, not conform to this world. It's a command. He said, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Wow. So in that verse, he said, do not conform to this world. The pattern the system, the philosophies, the worldview. It's a command. Don't be don't don't love the world. Don't don't love the world system. Don't 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 take on the nature of the world. It's a command. So if you are taking on the nature of the world as a Christian, you are sinning because you are disobeying the commandment. As I always say, it's not only adultery and fornication. Some people don't do adultery, don't do fornication. I don't advocate for it. But if you still conform yourself to the way they think. You try to deceive people. You try to, you know, use stories to scam people out of money. You use the Bible to manipulate people. You are still conforming to the to the pattern of this world. So it's a command. So it said, be transformed. It said, there, that means there has to be transformation in your life. And it starts with your mind, the way you think, the way you function. And also you have to be willing to change. See, many people don't want to change. They have shaped their future. They have shaped the way they think, the way they behave, the way they say things, their behavior, their character. They have shaped their behavior and they don't want to change. No. If you want Christ to be forming you, you have to be willing to change. Glory to God. So what is what does it mean for Christ to be forming you? What it is? When you look at the word that was translated, that you be, do not be confounded for, it, for Christ to be forming you, the word is mofu. The Greek word mofu. It means to form. To fashion, to shape, to mold from the same, to fashion to the same. That means Christ died. Now we could have millions or billions of Christs on this earth. When Christ died, he resurrected, now he's heaven is in heaven. The Holy Spirit is the one that will now shape us. It will shape the way we think. It will shape the way we speak. It will shape our behavior. It will shape our character to conform to Christ, to Jesus. That is what it means to be, to be transformed, to be to, to be shaped, for Christ to be formed in you. Let's take one step further. In Ephesians chapter four, verse seventeen. Ephesians chapter four, verse seventeen. Let me read to you. <laughs> oh dear Lord. If if we don't have the Bible, I don't know what life I would have been living by now. <laughs> Considering the way I was living 40, 10, uh, you know, for, for many years, 20 years ago, even last year, there's been transformation, there's improvement because I choose to submit myself to God. And you can do it. And for those of you who are already doing it, congratulations. Keep submitting yourself to God. Look at what Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 says. It said, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. This is a command. Henceforth, walk not. Don't do the same things as the world. Don't do the same thing as Nigerians. Don't do the same thing as Americans. Don't do the same thing as Europeans. Don't do the same thing as Chinese. Don't do the same thing as South Americans. Don't do the same thing as the people of the world. Woo! Don't do the same thing as Indians. Don't do the same thing as Pakistan. Because when you are born again, you were born into Zion. There's a way of manner that we do things in Zion. He said, I said, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, 
having the, the understanding darkened and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to walk all on cleanliness with greediness. When you are saved, God brought you out of darkness. Before you are saved, you were walking in wickedness because you're a wicked person. You see, so in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, it's telling you that you should not, you should not walk as other Gentiles walk. You should not think the same pattern. Don't talk like them. You know, like in America here, they always curse, always use this slang, mother F, U, F, U, F, L, O. I, before I got born again, I used to talk like that, but after I got saved, I have to allow God to transform the way I talk. As a, as a child of God, you don't talk like those unbelievers. They curse. You know, when I travel to my country, Nigeria, I see a lot of them copying the, you know, the uh, unsaved Amer African American. The way they curse on their, on their rap and hip hop song, they curse, they speak all those negative words. I'm like, do you know what you're saying? You are a Christian. You talk like them? No, a thousand times no. You have to allow Christ to transform the way you, you think and your character so how do you let christ to form in you how you might want to say what what must i do yes this is where you do work salvation is free salvation is by faith in the finished work of christ but you have to do works in allowing god to transform you there are a few things i put together here and i believe it's going to be a blessing to you once again go ahead and share number one <laughs> oh you have to allow god to break you down many years ago when god began to work on me it was so painful and I stumbled into a book written by a man called Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee. It was a Chinese, Chinese Christian. The title was the, the Breaking of the Outer Man and the Release of the Spirit. It tells you how God begins to work on you. He breaks your ego. He breaks your stubborn heart. He breaks you down. He begins to take things that you enjoy. He begins to take those passions away from you. It's a painful process. But you have to submit to them, to, to God dealing with you. So God has to first of all break you down. Yeah, he, he has to break you down. You find yourself, sometimes you are crying, you are weeping. You don't even know why you are crying. That's because God is now working on you. People look at you, they think you are weak. No, it's because you have submitted yourself to God to break your strong mind, to break your strong... Some people have what is called stony heart. Their heart is so stony, they are so callous, they are so wicked, and they will do evil and at the same time sleep comfortably and we don't have no remorse. They don't have conscience. That's because they have what is called stony heart. You see, before you got saved, you have that stony heart. When you get saved, that stony heart has to be broken down. And it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Number two, how can you let Christ to be forming you? You have to have what you have to develop a personal relationship with the word. You have to get to understand God through his word alone. Keep your eyes on the word. Don't keep your eye on miracles. Miracles will deceive you. Signs and wonders, prophecy, all those things. I'm not against them, but they will deceive you. Let me read 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. Have a personal fellowship with God through His Word. Second Corinthians chapter three verse eight. He said, "But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory." Holy Spirit, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit, welcome. I feel Your presence already. Thank you. Oh, we are transformed. Let me read again. Second Corinthians chapter three verse eighteen. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. As you fellowship with God through the Word, you begin to see the glory of God in the Word. And as you are seeing the glory of God, the glory of God begins to transform you. It begins to change you to become who you see in the Word. The Word of God is a reflection. It's a mirror to let us see who Christ is so that we can be transformed. The Holy Spirit is the one that transforms us. So get to know God only through the word don't get to know god by experience or by tradition or by by stories that people tell you get to know god personally through the ministry of the word so even if you're a pastor just prepare a message to you know to, to preach to people you might make a mess but when you know god through the word my goodness you begin to see transformation number three change the way you think change the way you think change the way you think to conform to the mind of Christ. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. You have to separate yourself for the kingdom. Ask God, Lord, use me for your glory. I wake up every morning and say, Father, who do you have you put in my life to be a blessing to today? What do you want me to do for you? My life is for your glory. Understand that you are bought at a price. You don't do things based on your feelings anymore. You don't do things based on what you desire. You do things for that person, the God that has bought you at a price. And that's Jesus Christ. 
Number five, there's something called solitude. Solitude is when you separate yourself and you have a quiet time with God through His Word. you just quiet before Him. You are not distracted by your desire. You are not distracted by the noise. You just lock yourself alone, solitude. Stay away from people. Stay away from the noise. And say, God, I want to know you more. I want to fellowship with you. I want to know you. As you fellowship with God, as you separate yourself from the world, you separate yourself from, from your own ambition. And say, Lord, I want to know you. As you separate yourself from him, you begin to form Christ in you. And number six, keep your focus on the word always. Always set your gaze. See, so many people will come with false doctrine. You know, we're in the age of apostasy now. People are falling away. They are using so many ways of deceiving people. Different doctrine. Different... Just keep your focus on God. There's different false miracles. People performing false miracles. I believe in miracles. And God is still using miracles. But allow God to do that miracle. Don't seek after miracles. Keep your gaze on the word of God. Hallelujah. I want to say, what is your benefit? What do I benefit if I allow Christ to be forming me? Oh my goodness. There's so much benefits when you look at the word of God. For quickly, because of time. Number one, what's your benefit? You see, you begin to think God's thoughts. God begin to think through your mind. In First Corinthians chapter two verse sixteen, First Corinthians chapter two verse sixteen, it says, "For who had known the mind of the Lord, that He may instruct him?" But we have the mind of Christ. Oh, I love it! I have the mind of Christ. You can have the mind of Christ if you allow Christ to be forming you. Yes, that's the privilege to have the mind of Christ. First Corinthians chapter two verse sixteen. He said, "But we have the mind of Christ." So in every circumstances, in every situation, you will say, "What would God do?" What would Jesus do? So you now have the mind of Christ. Number two, you function through the mind of Christ. You see, not only knowing what Christ will do, you take a decision through the mind of Christ. The wisdom of God is made available to you. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. I love that. As you fellowship with God, as you allow God to form Christ in you, you begin to function through the mind of Christ. He said, let this mind be in you. You have that mind. You don't longer have your own mind. You don't have the American's mind. You don't have the uh, Russian's mind. You don't have Nigerian's mind. You don't think like Nigerian. You think like Christ because you have the mind of Christ. You don't think like South African. You don't think like Chinese. No, you have the mind. Oh, glory to God. Christ formed in you. What are the benefits? Oh my goodness. So much that God has for you and I. Number three, you are a mature child of God. You are no longer a baby. You so many people you see people behaving like babies in the church. That's because they have not allowed Christ to be formed in them. Let me read Romans chapter 8, verse 14. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That word son is not the regular son, it's called the raised, the mature son. The Greek call it heels. You are the heels. That means God has now raised you, He's proud of you. He cannot give you responsibility, He can trust you. You are not you are no longer ordinary. You don't behave like everyone else. Number four, what are the benefits? You are eight, you are, oh, even this one is so powerful. When Christ is forming you, you are not able to stay in a bad church where they scam you, they manipulate you, they give you false doctrine, they use false miracles. They even so many people have been, you know, showing people using false miracles and false prophets to deceive people. But <laughs> the next Sunday, you find out that the place is packed. People are still there. Uh, but when Christ is forming you, you are not able to stay in a false church. No, it's not possible. Because Christ in you cannot stay there. You see, you will not adhere yourself to false doctrine. It's either you leave the place or you get kicked out. You get ejected. You will not be comfortable in their manipulative and false ministration or sermon. You won't be able to stay there. You are not comfortable. You can't. It's not possible. No, no, no. When Christ is forming you, no, you are not comfortable. When you see that they are doing shows, they are doing uh, manipulating you, they are teaching you or sharing scripture that is, does not line with God, you will not be able to stay in that environment when Christ begins to be formed in you. Glory to God. That is the benefit. So you guide yourself. You guide yourself. Let me read the Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 to 15. It said that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slay of men and cunning craftiness, craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You see, a lot of people are being deceived. They are using puppet to deceive people. You know, uh, <laughs> just like uh, somebody shared a video with me that says that 
If you don't pay your tithe, you will go to hell. You see, that is false. That's a false doctrine. Somebody said that if you come to their church, you will drink uh, uh, holy water. You won't be sick. That's false doctrine. That's using the word of God and God to deceive you. It's called, it says, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed through and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Ah, yeah. Every wind of doctrine. By the slave of men. You see human beings just like you and I. They will deceive you with the word of God. With the Bible. They dress with the color and we use big title, archbishop, senior bishop, senior pope. The, the, the goal is to deceive you. But when Christ is formed in you, you will not be deceived. You can see through the craftiness and manipulation. He said that that would help us not be no more children tossed to and fro and carried by out with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. They lie in wait to deceive. That's what it is. Anything that does not line up with the word of God, they lie. It doesn't matter whether it's an old man being in a church for 60 years, they are still using those doctrines to manipulate. There was a video of a, a, a ministry where they want to cast out devils from women, and the man, the so called man, will go and be sucking women's you know, breasts, and now one will be kissing women. You see, that's craftiness to deceive you and to take your soul to hell. But when Christ is formed in you, you become mature. You see, verse 15 of Ephesians chapter 4, but speaking the truth in love. See, you become a truth lover, you seek after truth. You stay in truth. You abide in truth. You don't let anybody, anybody deceive you by giving you title or position. No. You go for the truth. And you go where the truth goes. You go. He said, but speaking the truth may grow up in all things, which is the head of Christ. Number five. Oh, I love number five. What are the benefits of Christ being forming you? You become complete. Complete. So many Christians are not complete. Yes, they serve a lot. They go, they, 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 you know, Go from one program to the other, always looking for miracles. Always go, oh, what is the latest evangelist? Who is the latest prophet? They are never complete. But when Christ is forming you, you are complete. Somebody shout hallelujah. Go ahead again, share this video. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. <laughs> it's, oh my goodness. I love this one. <laughs> Dear Jesus. Woo! This is B. It says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Christ. Dwelleth all the fullness of God held bodily. And verse 10, verse 10, verse 10, Colossians chapter 2. And ye are complete in Christ, which is the head of all principality and power. It didn't say you are complete in your church doctrine. It didn't say you are complete in your pastor or bishop. It said you are complete in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you. I choose to be complete in Christ. I choose to use... My handsome face to be complete in Christ. You choose to use your beautiful face and your beautiful body to be complete in Christ. You choose to use your handsome face to be complete in Christ. I am complete in Christ. That should be your mindset. And how do you do that? Allow God to form Christ in you. We are not condemning anybody because it's a journey in life. But unfortunately, so many Christians don't even know that Christ can be formed in them. They think that when they belong to a, a church, a denomination, that is the all that is, no, it's a whole lot more than that. Glory to God. Allow God to form Christ in you. Well, let me take this one step further. <laughs> Number six, the benefit of Christ being formed in you. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. That's why I choose to be born again. I choose to be saved and to preach the gospel. Number six, you will be like Christ in the human form. <laughs> the religious people don't like that. <laughs> they think that, oh, our super apostle. Our prophet. No, you watching me, you will be Christ in the human form. How? <laughs> in John chapter 12 and verse 8 to 9. John chapter 12 and verse 8 to 9. How can you become Christ in the human form? <laughs> Philip said unto Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. That is John chapter 12. Look at what Jesus said. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet, has thou not known me, Philip? <laughs> Those are so many people in churches, they just don't know Christ. <laughs> they give big seed, they go to program, they do sacrificial uh, service, but they don't know Christ. See? But he said, Have I been with you so long and you still don't know me? <laughs> wow. Verse 9, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? 
He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. When Christ is formed in you, when they see you, they see Christ. Because you are Christ's representative. But until you allow God to form Christ in you, you will be an ordinary being. I pray that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. That's the benefit. Number seven, as I begin to round up, you have what is called the fullness of God in you. Oh my God. God's plan is to replicate himself in you, to replicate Christ in you. You have the fullness, the fullness, the full package of God inside of you. When you walk on the street of, of your town, you are carrying the package with you. In John chapter 16, uh, John chapter 1 verse 16, John chapter 1 verse 16, it says, And of his fullness have all we receive and grace for grace. The fullness. See, you are not seeking after false prophets. You are not seeking after false teachers. You are not seeking after false pastors. You are not even looking for deliverance. You see some Christians, every six months they are going for deliverance. They are going for deliverance. Something is chasing them in their dream. No, when Christ is forming you, no, you, are, you don't go after deliverance. Because the deliverer lives in you. you the, the power of God has come to live in you. You, see, you are not looking for miracles. You have become the miracle workers. You are not go chasing after men and that... For, for doing miracles? Oh, no, 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 no. You know God through the Bible. You know who God is because you are now full of God. Glory to God. What are the challenges that you may face as you are being formed? Let me quickly go over this. As you are being formed, because some of you are going through this challenge, but you don't know. But as, as you avail yourself to God and God begins to form you, you begin to understand why you are going through some of those things you are going through in life. Number one, what are the challenges that you go through when God is forming Christ in you? Number one, it is a very painful experience. When God is forming Christ in you, it is very painful. It's a very painful experience. In John chapter 15 verse 2, he said, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he projects. And that translation says he prone, that he may bring forth more fruit. When God begins to prune you, he begins to cut things away from your body, from your mind, it is painful. So those are the challenges where well, you have to submit yourself to God. Let him finish what he's doing in your life number two you will be misunderstood when god is working on you you will be misunderstood because you'll be thinking like other people you know you'll be misunderstood men of faith are mostly misunderstood people will misunderstand you number three you will be rejected abandoned and betrayed i remember many years ago when i when god began to work on my life oh the people that i love the most the person that i love the most walked out left me i was abandoned but i set my gaze on christ I set on my gaze on Christ because he has revealed heaven to me. When God began to form Christ in you, you will be abandoned. People will walk out of your life. They will betray you. It's a package. Number four, you may be a you, you will be lonely. You may be lonely and you, be, you will not fit into cliques. You know, you go to some churches these days, they have cliques. You know, you have to belong to cliques. You have to belong to a group. When Christ, God begins to form Christ in you, you will not be able to fit in in the cliques anymore. In Luke chapter 6, verse 22 23, as I bring to horror because of time, Luke 6 22 to 23, it says, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and they and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you and cast you your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. In that same verse 23, it says, Rejoice ye in that day and live for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers did unto their prophets of old. So there are times because people will now say, Oh, you know, you are holier than thou, you are. You are different, you think different, so they will begin to cut you off. They will invite you to their event, they will invite you for, for their programs, they will be cutting you off because they know that you are made up of Christ. That is some of the challenges. Number, number five, God will discipline you in the process. When you do something wrong, God will discipline you. Yes, God will discipline you. And when God disciplines you, it's painful. It's painful when God disciplines you. When you do something wrong, your conscience is dealing with you. Have you ever seen some people, they do something wrong, they don't have any conscience? But you, when you do something wrong, when you won't sin intentionally, your heart is beating. You are feeling pain. That is because God is disciplining you. And it's a, it's a very painful experience. But you have to allow God to deal with you. Because there's a reward waiting for you in heaven. Let me read Hebrews chapter 12 verse 6. It says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chastened, and scourged every son whom he received. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastened not? But if ye be without chastening, whereof all are particulars, then are ye bastards and not sons. You find out that God does not chastise, God does not discipline unbelievers. And if you don't allow God to form Christ in you, he won't discipline you. 
because he, he, you know, he doesn't. But when you say you love Jesus, the minute you say, Father, I love you, I remember when I first said, Jesus, I love you. Oh my goodness. When God began to discipline anger in me, rebuking me of anger, oh my goodness, it was so painful. So many things that I used to do many years ago before I got saved. I used to go to club, party, do another thing, jam in the club. But when God began to deal with me, because I said, Lord, I'm submitting myself to you. Are you watching me today? There is hope for you. Submit yourself to God. Even though God chastises you, He will build you up. He will not abandon you. Wow. And the number six challenge is that you will not find time to be alone. See, the devil throws so much uh, program in you. Some people, they go to church every day. They have program here, program there. You never have time to be alone with God. You have to make up your mind that, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to church today. I'm not doing this today. I will stay home. I will stay alone with God. You have to find time to be alone with God. No matter how busy your schedule is, solitude is very important. So you might say, what, what if I don't allow Christ to be forming me? Well, it's up to you. Number one, let me go to the real world. You'll be a kind of Christian. Kind of Christian. You see, talking bad talk, saying negative things, always saying negative things. Yet you are a Christian. You know, you'll be grieving the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, say, Grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed. So you'll be grieving the Holy Spirit. You'll be grieving God if you don't allow Christ to be falling in you. Number two, you'll not be able to take your place in the program of God. Ephesians, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, For the flesh lusted against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary, the one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you will. So what God has called you to do on this earth, you will not be able to do it. It will be a wasted life. And I praise that you won't waste your life in Jesus' name. Oh, you see, you are still saved. You will go to heaven, but you will be full of regrets if you don't allow God to form Christ in you. You see, there's so many disadvantages if you don't allow God to form Christ in you. So it's more than going to church. You must say, Lord, I want you to form Christ in me. It's a decision that you have to make. All right. Let's move forward. What are the disadvantages if you don't like God to form Christ in you? You may not please God. You won't be able to please God. Romans 8, 8 says, So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You will not be a God pleaser. Alright, moving along. What is the disadvantage? You will be a babe. You will always be drinking milk instead of solid food. You will be a babe in Christ. You will just be a baby. A baby. A Christian baby. Still wearing diapers and drinking milk. <laughs> ah! In First Corinthians chapter three, verse one to three, hey, you will not be spiritually mature if God doesn't form Christ in you. He said, "And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ." See, there are so many people that they are babes in Christ. He said, "I fed you with milk and not with meat, for he that to <laughs> he were not able to bear it, neither ye now are able, for ye are yet carnal." You see, if you don't allow God to form Christ in you, you'll be a babe. A spiritual babe, always drinking milk instead of solid food. That's an embarrassment. You can be in a church for 5, 10, 40 years and you still are, you are still a spiritual babe. You know, I've seen so many people that I, <laughs> oh dear Lord, they have been doing this for many years and when they preach and minister, I say, oh my God. But you know, we are not here to condemn anybody or laugh at anybody. Everybody, you know, is doing theirs at a different journey, but the minute you submit yourself to God, He begins to deal with you. He begins to form Christ in you. He begins to break you down. And you are not going to be, your life will never be the same again. You know, so having known this, how do you apply this to yourself? What do you do now? Okay, number one, what I put together, let Jesus be the center of your life. Everything you do, let Jesus be the center. You know, if I ask you today, what is most important to you in your life? What is most important to you? Some people say, well, I want to get married, I want to have a baby, I want to have a husband, I want to have a wife, I want to have work. No, it thousand times so. The first thing is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let Jesus be the center of your life. I have some people that say, I am looking for a man of God. I want to marry a man of God. And I say, what do you want a man of God for? You see, so he can take care of me. He, he won't beat me. He will take care of me. You see, you, you misplace your priority. God will not give you a man of God if your mind is not centered on Christ. No. And also, God will not give you a woman of God if your mind is not centered on Christ. So let Christ be the center of your life let Christ be the most important thing in your life you know in negative situation whatever situation that confronts you always think the mind of Christ you know do you plan to fulfill God's plan for your life I don't know about you yes in my own I want to fulfill God's plan for my life so let God be the center of your life so let God transform you today you know don't let your life be a wasted life each year, evaluate yourself. Have you made progress? Are you still behaving the way you used to behave before? 
Are you still lying? Are you still manipulating? I have some friends. If they want to ask you for something, they, you use guilty plea on you. I'm sorry, guilty ploy. They want to make you feel guilty so they can get something from you. See, when they make you guilty first, when you feel guilty, then they ask something they not give to them. See, that's manipulation. See, and you are a Christian. No, you have not grown. Some people are not direct. They are very indirect. They are not straightforward. As a Christian, you have to be straightforward. And you can only do that when you allow God to form Christ in you. Glory to God. So I pray that you allow God to form Christ in you. It's a painful experience. You know, people may misunderstand you. Your family may not like you. Your best friend may not like you. Even your classmates, they will not, may not even want you around them. Your colleagues may not want you around them. But the benefits, the reward far outweigh the negative side. So my prayer for you right now is that you allow Christ to form you. And you have to decide what you do. So every day when you wake up, you say, Father, not my will, but your will. Not my will, but your will. You have to yield to the Holy Spirit to form Christ in you. So your prayer should be, Father, in the name of Jesus, I yield to the Holy Spirit to form Christ in me. Not to form church doctrine in you. Not to form a pastor's behavior, his style on you. Some people, they dress like their pastor, do all that, they cut their hair like that. It's okay, they preach like that. No, but you, you are unique. Your goal should be, Father, I yield that you will form Christ in me in the name of Jesus. You know, always let God know that your life is for the glory. Everywhere I go, I always say, my life is for the glory of God. My life is for the glory of God. The purpose is to allow God to form Christ in me. God knows you better than anybody else. So he knows what to do. He knows how to form Christ in you. You cannot manipulate God and tell God, don't touch it. No, this is what I want. No, God knows you. Before you were born, he already knew you. He planned your life. So I pray that you'll be strong enough and allow God to form Christ in you, in every area of your life, in the name of Jesus. And if you are watching me today, you are not yet saved. God will not deal with you. God will not form in Christ in you and you will lose out. It doesn't matter how much money you have in your bank account. It doesn't matter your position. It doesn't matter, you know, your influence. It doesn't matter if you're a beautiful woman, how beautiful you are, and men are chasing after you, or if you're a man, how handsome and strong you are, how much money you are, and you are sleeping with a lot of money. It doesn't make any difference. If you are not saved, God cannot form Christ in you. And of course, it's hell. Unless you are saved, you go to hell. You know, with all that is going on in this world, pestilence and everything going on, rapture is about to take place. Are you prepared for rapture? Are you rapture ready? You won't be raptured if you are not saved. Your good works cannot take you to heaven. Glory to God. All you need to do is share the gospel. That Christ, he died for all of your sins. By shedding his blood. And he died, he was buried, he raised himself from the dead. According to the scripture. Today he's in heaven. So if you can put your faith alone on what Jesus did for you. you find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to 4. That Jesus died and took all your sin. You put your faith alone, not your works. Not saying you go to church, you got baptized, you give, you did good. Just put your faith alone in what Jesus did for you. The Bible says you will be saved. And the Holy Spirit will come and seal you with, it, with, with, with heaven. He will come and seal eternity in you. Once you repent of your way, say the way I'm doing, where I'm going is bad. I repent. You make 180 degrees and you turn to Jesus. You say, Jesus, I need you. You are my Savior. And you say it to God. Then you get saved. That's a great opportunity. Don't lose it. Don't waste your life. Unless you are saved, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And God will not build Christ in you. So go ahead and say to God, get saved today. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. I want to quickly thank you for today's service. It's just an honor to have so many of you watch with me and to fellowship with me. It's such an honor. Every Sunday, as, we, as God gives us this message every time, I'm very, very deeply honored to have you fellowship with me. So share your testimony. Share your salvation testimony. So many of you have called me and said, Pastor Ambrose, oh, we got saved watching your videos. Thank you. We, we heard the world. We thought we were saved, but now we know that our, it's our faith, not our work. Not because we got ba water baptized. Not because we joined a church. Not because we are a giver. We got saved because Jesus shed his blood. So send me that testimony. I'm very, very, very excited. So share your testimony. Feel free to share your testimony. And finally, if you want to support our ministry in any way, as you are led through prayers, you can support us through prayers. You can support us by sharing the video. You can support us any way that you are led. Let the Holy Ghost lead you. And it will be an honor to partner with you. I want to say thank you so much for watching. 
and fellowship with me on this lovely Sunday. It's a beautiful day here in Nations Capital. I've been on missionary trip for about a week or so, and I'm back in the home studio. So thank you so much for your patience and for fellowship with me. And some of you who have been sending me prayers and you know praying with me, I really appreciate you and I appreciate your encouragement. God bless you. I love you with the love of Christ. And before I go, let me just quickly say hello to uh, Rev Lillian Bosco. I see Uti Tubotin, Rachel Mutoni, Adesanya, uh, and so many of you watching. Mutoni say, Be blessed. Yes, you are blessed too. My dear sister, God bless you. Uh, sister Mibe said, Blessing, Brother Ambrose and family. Thank you so much. Great woman of God. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Understand that Christ can be formed in you if you allow God. It's only God that can form Christ in you. No man can form Christ in you. It's only God. As you submit to God, He will form Christ in you. He will beautify your life. You will be refreshed. You will be refreshed from the inside out. And that's where no weapon form of fashion against you shall prosper. Because now ye are of God and have overcome them. Because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. So go ahead and submit yourself to God. Let God form Christ in you to beautify your life to beautify your personality and use you for the kingdom of god god bless you thank you for fellowshipping and i will see you again in my next video bye bye love you with the love of christ bye, -bye.